Uh, hi everyone. Um, okay, welcome back to another lesson. I thought today we would do this little boat scene. I took a photograph on us down in the uh, New Forest and it's got a couple of little boats in and a sailing boat and a little cottage at the back. But what I want to do, I want to have an exercise here of really loosening up and painting very freely. Um, so I've really sketched it out, as you can probably tell, in quite a rough manner. I kind of limited myself five minutes for the sketch and I suggest you do the same thing. Just doesn't matter if the boats aren't perfect and everything's spot on, just get it approximate and then we're gonna have a go at painting it in a very loose manner. Um, I'm gonna change the colors a little bit, but I'll warm it up a bit and uh, make it look a bit more cheerful, a bit sunnier. Um, so I like my painting sunny. So anyway, uh, when you get to paint it, of course you could do it any way you want, but I'm gonna kind of let you see how I paint in a, loose, a very loose style. So I'm going to start by misting the paper a little bit so we can get the paint moving around. Actually, I did that quite a lot, probably too much, but never mind. Um, plenty of some nice clean water to start the painting session off with. And then mix some blue. I'm just going back for some cerulean blue and some cobalt. I'm just trying to stick with some same colours here throughout the video so you get uh, used to them. And then I'm going to have a bit of raw sienna and a little bit of light red in another one. So basically that's my palette as it stands for starting. I've got some light red, raw sienna and some cobalt and cerulean. And I'm just going to launch into it with some light red and the sky. It's going to be really free. Just enjoy the painting. I want to keep that cottage white down there if I can. So and then I'm going to get some cobalt blue and try and picture some clouds going on. A bit more blue. Bring it down. Remembering we want a combination of hard and soft edges in our painting to make it work well. Now if we mix that cobalt blue into the light red we get a very nice grey. And I don't mind that going across the roof, across that roof. And let's take the blue off the page down here. So we're keeping this really simple, really lively. And we're going to see what we end up with. It might be a mess when it finishes. It might be a complete mess but who knows. It's exciting. Right, now we want the uh, the reeds that line the co that sit in front of the cottage. And for that I'm using raw sienna, almost neat raw sienna for that. Go back to the photograph. Have a look. I want a really loose fluid painting. Remembering that I'm not using masking fluid, so I'm painting around my whites. And I'm going to move that red around a bit so it's not right in the centre of the painting. I might take a little bit more up here just to balance the painting up a bit bit more cobalt blue, a bit more light red to make a darker grey. Have some clouds going on maybe. And a little bit of uh, just make it look interesting. Try and paint around some of these little cells that I've got going on. They probably won't look anything like sailing boats. Tom have finished. But uh, we're not too worried. So we've got that bit done. So now we're going to work our way down the page, across the uh, across the water area. And that's kind of like a grey, warm mixture in places. Just picking up the, the reeds in the reflection on the water. A 
around the boat. I want to keep the boat nice and white. Go back to some cobalt blue. Pick up those reflections in the uh, mirror of the, the sky, in the water. I'm aiming to do. Just paint around there. Sorry if I go a bit silent sometimes. When you're painting like this, you it's quite a lot of concentration goes through because everything's happening so fast. There's gonna be a shadow down that side of the boat. So I might as well just put that in now. That boat is blue there, so I can do that. Then I'll go over some raw umber and I might have a bit of Naples yellow in it to make like a, that's like a sandy bit going on here. Make some more cobalt blue. A bit too dark. I want to keep a nice white down there, just paint it over it. So I'm just going to lift that paint back out again, just so we can uh, keep the reflection of the boat pretty clear. Now I'll add a little bit of magenta to cobalt blue, make like a purpley colour. Just take it on here because this is quite purpley around here. Um, we'll mix that in with the. We just bring the brush, press the brush right down so we take all the paint out. And we just keep working it. That's going to be a little pontoon there. That's the idea. Can go over this we don't have to worry too much about that now we can warm it up as it comes into the foreground here because that's this is a lot of seaweed in the foreground so we can make sure we get that in I don't want it too dull so I'm gonna there's a kind of a strip that gets so now this is the wet in wet technique we're using again and I'm letting the seaweed um, run into the blue so we don't we can come back and get some harder edges later but now it's all about a bit of blue because we have some green in that seaweed as well and we'll come back to that a bit of burnt sienna as well i'll make it i'll give you a list of all the colors before you start what colors you're going to be using in this paint I want some and that little uh, area in the middle that's white is going to end up being a nice pool of colour some water in there and then in the front here I'm just going to go Burnt Sienna, Magenta, some Cobalt Blue, because there was some heathers, believe it or not, right on the uh, heather, yeah, as in the plant, was right on the uh, edge of the water, but they were so scorched and burnt. But we'll try and get them in. And for that I'm just using a bit of Cobalt Blue and Magenta, just to, to indicate them. Can't see them in the picture though, but they were there. I promise. And if they weren't, does it really matter? I know it will to some people. But... Okay. Right, before that dries, I want to get myself some more burnt umber, some more cobalt blue. And just consolidate this a bit. Where the seaweed is, you try and use nice 
nice scriptive brush strokes just uh, we're really getting some color in here it's looking good you know you don't want it to get too hot looking and we can do some splatter and all sorts of things on here but in the picture it's all very dark and we don't want it if you're painting for nature you'd see all the lights we don't want to make it all too dark What have we been spending on this painting now? How long? Five minutes? So it doesn't, well, maybe longer. I don't know. Time flies when you're painting. But anyway. Right, I think that's the first stage. We'll leave it at that for a minute, let that dry, and then we'll come back to it. Okay then, right, now I wanted quickly, just in the horizon there, I can just see the distance of, uh, well I assume must be Limington in the distance. So I'm just going to, and it's just a lovely little blue colour, and I think that's quite important because it'll end up showing off these reeds. So I'm just going to mist it because I want to diffuse the top a little bit. So I'm just going to just use my little mixer bottle, and I've just mixed up some cobalt blue and some uh, cadmium red. Um, actually, I might know, I'm going to change that colour. I have cadmium cobalt blue and light red, I think. Just going to see what it looks like. Yeah, I quite like that. Right, so I'm just going to, because it, I don't want to go too strong. A little bit, it, it will dry slightly lighter. It's just there, just in the distance. I'm quite happy for that just to run into different areas, softening the bottom of my brush now. Because even though when you do paint sort of loose and quickly, you still have just a Softening some of the hard the tops. I'm um, sorry. So yeah, sometimes when you when you are painting loose, and you still have to be cons you have to stop and consider what you're doing sometimes. So, and often I don't, and uh, then you end up with a mess. Anyway, that would do. So uh, okay, so now we'll have a look at the cottage, and for the ro the roof, I'm just going to use. Um, Cobalt blue and some raw umber. Maybe a bit of light red actually as well. Because I quite like the way that light red glows off the top of that. So I'm just going to pop it on there. A bit, a bit. Oh, Toby's just come to say hello. Hello, Toby. Right. I'm just going to go down the shadow side. Down there. Paint the shadow in. And then there's some uh, sort of reedy type grasses. They're quite sort of yellow. Well, they appear to be on my picture. Um, so I'm just gonna just gonna block them in like that. Yep, I'll do me. And in front of the house. So I'm painting a little bit of detail now, but I don't want to get too fiddly. I promised myself when I started this I was going to be free. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep the painting going freely and not get too clobbered in detail, but it's quite a hard thing to do. The other roof. 
I might just put the chimney in if I can. I think as I get used to uh, making the videos I'll be able to kind of not talk so much. I think uh, sometimes I feel there's a need to fill every silence but I think sometimes just watching what somebody's doing and then maybe you what, asking some questions later is just as beneficial as me waffling on and often talking probably a load of rubbish. I'm not meaning to talk rubbish, but <laughs> that sort of nervous energy you get when you're painting. There. I'm just going to leave the cottages like that. So I've just basically put the shadows in, highlights the greens, I'll put no detail. All I've done is just blocked in the shadows with quite lively colours. Right, now I'm going to go to the reeds and put some uh, more washes over that. So I'm just going to go back with the raw sienna. I know that works well. And I'm going to use a, a brush on its side and I'm just going to suggest the... Not, like I say, it's just all about suggestion. Now in front of there is some green, it's quite a bright green. I'm not going to go nearly as bright. I'm just going to use some cobalt blue and some lemon yellow, believe it or not, for that, just to keep it it's quite it's quite bright, it's quite dark on the picture, but you know, I'm not going that route today. There we go. I think I'll leave that the way it is. Um, yeah, what do I think? I think I need to let it dry for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to just jump in on this boat here and uh, do a little bit of work to that. It's got some nice warm shadows on it, so I'm going to try and get them. So I'm just going to put some reds in it because I can see it's reflecting up off the beach and some blue and basically I'm not trying to I'm not mixing the colors together um, in the palette I'm kind of letting them merge in on the on the bottom on the palette on the paper Excuse me. Okay. Oh, there we go. Obviously we have to do more work to that. But uh, it's kind of getting there. I'm kind of working on the pontoon now. Just laying in the colours. 
the main areas, the main shapes. And then I'll come back and put the final darks in. Later. Okay. Just soft some of these, soften some of these shadows a little bit. It's not until you've actually got the uh, the final ones in, the final dark thin that you can tell whether it's going to work. You, know, you often look at it now and you think, oh my god, what's gone wrong? But you can, sometimes, I don't know, when, you, when you're painting a bit, you can, you can go through stages of loving it and hating it. Um, it's just, be, and I think the reason for that is because you, can't, you just can't tell what's going to happen until Until you've got all the darks in, until you've got everything in place. It takes to never sort of write a painting off until you've actually worked on it for a while. Well, to the end, really, because it can often take that long before you realise that it's not very good. Okay, just going to move over to the other boat a minute, just while things there dry off a little bit. And I don't mind these uh, blues touching the darks on the pontoon and them all running in together. So this is always a quite a slow part of the painting because you've had that sort of initial kind of hit put laying in the first washes and then it can go a little bit a bit quiet until you've uh, laid the next darks in.
there. And yet, you know, when uh, in a minute when I come back to this and I draw some detail in with the uh, the rigger, that will help put it all together, sort of co make it more cohesive and work. Painting's a very funny thing, as you all know. <laughs> Frustrating, but wonderful. And I'm just sort of like squinting my eyes, looking for the darks, and trying to match them as best as I can. I'm not expecting anything else. I'm trying to, you know, just enjoy the process really, as much as you can. Without becoming a, too much of a slave to accuracy and all those things. See, it's funny, now I've balanced that side up, I can look at the other side and I can see that the boat needs more detail down, more darkness down this side now. It needs just to. It's this constant referral and balancing each side. just realised the other day I painted my hand on my hip. Didn't realise until I watched the video back. I could see my hand was constantly on my hip. Who is now? It's a habit. And I just think, okay, now we're just gonna have a look at these this area down here and kind of make it look a bit a bit more watery. Not too much though. And again this piece in front of the boat here. And then we're going to put some shadows on this seaweed. So for that all I'm going to use is some more burnt umber, some cobalt blue, quite a dark mix. So burnt umber, or you could use burnt sienna I suppose, and cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. I'm just going to lay in some shadows on there. Just where I see the real darks. But again, I want to be really descriptive with the brushwork. I don't want to be trying to draw in every uh, little piece of um, seaweed, unless that's what you know you like doing. I'm just looking for the overall. I'm just looking at the picture, kind of. Averagely seeing where the darks are and just going for it. That's all I'm doing. Just to give it But these are the things that you've got to be so careful you don't overdo. because you can kind of lose it in that process of overdoing. So really this painting hasn't taken very long and I've done that a little bit too dark there but it will dry lighter, I'm mindful of that so there's a shadow down there. Let's go back into this part of the boat again bit more shadow down there.
don't know. It's dark on the picture, but I'm not sure. And then where we've got the reflection of the house, just might put a little bit, of, make a bit more of it than what's in the picture. What we could do is just put the little chimney pots, reflection of those in, just averagely. And to be honest, I'm not going to do an awful lot more than that. It was a, a demonstration, and oh, what we could do is just where well, we've got our heathers here, just indicate some brush strokes down there. There. there we go. Anyway, oh, it's over there. But I'm not going to do much. I don't want to paint every little bit. Like that. That's it. That'll do. Okay, then. There's my sort of um, interpretation of the scene. Um, as I said at the beginning, I was going to paint it really loosely, as quickly as I could. But still bearing in mind that you have to slow down at times, even though it's a loose, we're loose painters, we still have to slow down and consider what we're doing because you obviously you've got to think about the values, the colours you the colours you're using, and things like that. But uh, overall, yeah, I'm kind of pleased with the result. I guess it was about 45, 50 minutes worth of painting. Um, but it's the way I prefer to paint, so have a go and then um you know, I look forward to seeing your results. Okay, um, right, so let's look forward to the next uh, video. Bye for now.